Welcome to a Code Report Advent of Code solution walkthrough. My name is Connor Hookstra, and in today's video, we're going to walk through day one, problem A of the Advent of Code 2020 solution in APL. Throughout the Advent of Code, I posted several solutions in APL on my Twitter, and I got multiple requests for explanation videos and walkthroughs of what the APL solution uh, was doing or what it meant. So this is what this video is gonna do. I'm not gonna post videos for every single day and every single problem, but I'm gonna pick uh, a few of them that I posted on Twitter and make explanation videos. Uh, so note, so the walkthrough is gonna happen on tryapl.org. This is if you're a C++ developer, uh, similar to Compiler Explorer or uh, Rust Playground if you're a Rust developer or Swift Playground if you're a Swift developer. It's just basically an online REPL that you can use to play around with APL. And um, some, I've got questions on how do you type the APL characters for, for tryapl.org. Uh, the key that you need to press is the backtick character. So um, if you have the keyboard shortcuts memorized, you just uh, type backtick back tick, and then either the key or shift and then the key. Um, if you don't know these, there's a handy little uh, clickable keyboard of the symbols at the top of the screen that you'll be able to use. So let's hop over to tryapl and walk through this solution. So here we are in try in our tryapl.org REPL. Um, note here is the clickable keyboard at the top. Um, and slowly but surely, I would recommend you to learn the keyboard shortcuts if you're interesting, uh, interested in learning how to code an APL. You can learn this by just hovering over the glyph. So this is IOTA. Um, and you can see that it says tab colon I. So I is the key that this maps to on the keyboard. So what is our problem that we'll be solving today? Uh, day one, problem A asks us, uh, given an array of numbers, find the two that sum to 220 and then multiply those two numbers. So it's pretty straightforward. I will link the full problem statement uh, down below in the description of this video, but it's rather lengthy and I'm just gonna uh, summarize or give you the summary, which I just did. So how do we do this? This is gonna um, utilize uh, an algorithm called outer product, which doesn't exist in many languages outside of array programming languages. It's, it's my favorite algorithm. Uh, so outer product takes a left and right argument and a binary operation. So here the left and right arguments are is just gonna be our list V. Um, and so we, we type outer product with a jot and then dot. And then the binary operation can be anything. Uh, so here we're just gonna pass a catenate, which takes two elements and just forms a two uh, element array. And then our right argument is V. So when we do this, we're gonna get a six by six matrix of each of the pairs of elements uh, together. And so because we want to find the elements that sum to 220, we just wanna replace our catenate operation with the binary plus operation. So when we do this, we get another six by six matrix, uh, but instead of catenating this time, we've added the numbers together. So you can see now, we can see visually that we have 220 in the first row and in the fourth row. These are the same pairs of numbers just reversed. So the next thing we need to do is uh, basically back out the two numbers that, uh, summed to 220 and multiply them. So the first way, uh, the first thing we need to do is basically uh, identify which, which pairs of numbers sum to 220. So we can do that with a unary operation that's just checking which of the elements are equal to 220. And because uh, we are dealing with an array programming language, we, ha we are able to get, take this basically unary operation and apply it to every element in our matrix. Um, so this is gonna give us a Boolean matrix where the one represents every element that was equal to 220. And we can now uh, combine this Boolean matrix with an algorithm called where. And when where is provided a Boolean matrix, uh, it's basically going to uh, return you the indices of all of the elements that were one. So if we do this, we're gonna end up with a two element nested uh, list where each of the uh, lists in our nested list represent the indices where we were looking at ones before. Um, note that these basically represent the same pair of numbers, it's just the indices reversed. So we can get rid of one of them or just take the first one. Um, and we can do that using an algorithm that's called take. So we just go one as the left argument and then uh, take, which is the up arrow. And that's gonna return us our uh, indices that we need. And uh, we very nicely have an algorithm called, uh, I believe it's called index. Um, I actually don't know how to say this. Um, I know the fat uh, rectangle is called squad, um, and I think this is just called index. 
And when we uh, pass a Boolean, or when we pass a uh, list of indices on our left argument, and then uh, our basically list of elements as our right argument, which is just V, this is going to return us, it's basically an apply Boolean mask as it's known in certain um, uh, array libraries like pandas and QDF. And so once we have these, we basically just need to multiply them together, which is just a uh, multiplies reduce. Um, and that is our solution. So uh, if you were following me on Twitter, you, you'll note that this is slightly different than the solution that I posted because this is a non-point-free um, solution, meaning that it mentions our argument three different times, um, which irritates me because in APL and other array programming languages like J, they have support for something called point-free programming or tacit programming, where basically you don't have to mention your arguments, which I think is somewhat elegant. Um, so let's slowly but surely remove each of the references to our arguments. So the first one is really easy because we are passing the same thing as our left and right argument to utter product. Um, there is a glyph for this called uh, commute. And this actually corresponds to the W combinator for those of you that are familiar with the SKI combinator calculus. Um, and actually that's not the right one. It should be this little, it's, sometimes this is known as selfie uh, because it sort of looks like a little uh, you know, confused face. Um, and if we type this, sure enough, we get the same answer. So that's uh, one down, two to go. The next one um, we can do basic, or we can do them both at the same time is by using an S combinator, um, which I'm not gonna get into, but basically uh, it involves uh, actually, I can briefly explain it. If you're given A, B, and C in parentheses where uh, A, B, and C are all algorithms or functions, basically uh, in the monadic case, which is what we're going to have here, A and C are applied to whatever argument, you know, argument X is passed here, and then res the result of applying A and C to X are fed to a binary operation B here. Um, so our binary operation is going to be this index um, and our unary operations in this case it's just identity because we're not doing anything to v here um, so we can replace this with uh, identity and we can just turn this whole thing into an anonymous function and we do that by changing our parens to braces and uh, replacing our uh, literal argument with an omega um, which basically just means uh, your first argument. And then we have to put all of this in uh, parentheses. Um, and that forms our S combinator. So uh, APL folks don't refer to this as S combinators. They for, uh, refer to it as a train. Specifically, it's a three train, which is known as a fork. Um, I think it's a shame, though, that um, they renamed them because uh, Kenneth Iverson, the creator of their language, um, explicitly took this from the SKI combinator calculus, which he mentioned in the 1989 paper. Um, but APL folks don't know that because they rebranded it and that happened 30 years ago, so people forgot about it. Uh, but sure enough, if we apply, um, if we uh, put our argument now on the right-hand side and hit enter, we get uh, the same result. And so now we can store this whole thing in a named you know, solution called solve um, and we can delete this. And so now we have solve, which doesn't actually at any point explicitly mention an argument. I guess technically we have an omega here, which might mean this isn't point free, um, but I'm actually not sure how to get rid of this because uh, I'm not good enough at APL. Um, and so sure enough, if we um, go solve V, we get the same answer. So uh, I know that was a whirlwind tour of uh, an APL solution to Advent of Code Day 1 Problem A, but hopefully you found this interesting. Um, APL is my favorite language, makes me think differently, and um, it's uh, just constantly blowing my mind as I continue to learn it um, week by week. So hope you enjoyed, hope you learned something. If you want to see more of these uh, Advent of Code APL solution walkthroughs, uh, be sure to uh, hit that like button and leave a comment. And if this blows up, then maybe I'll make a, a ton of these. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.